Hello everyone, my name is Haley Elizabeth and if you don't know who I am, this is my true crime podcast where once a week I sit down and I talk about all things true crime, ranging from murders, disappearances, cults, all the way to the biggest drug bust in history, the biggest bank heist in history, all things true crime. So if you're interested in any of that, you can subscribe and watch the visual version every Wednesday on my YouTube channel or you can head over to Spotify, Apple, wherever you can find podcasts every Tuesday for the audio version. Now for today's case, we're going to be talking about the case of the Hicks family. Now, there is a lot to get through, so we're just going to hop right into it. All the way in Georgia lived the Lands family. The Lands family consisted of the mom, the dad, and two sons, Matthew and Austin. And one day, Austin had gotten into an altercation with one of his next-door neighbors, and this led to his brother Matthew wanting to defend his brother. And in doing so, he decided to kill the family as a way for revenge, but what Matthew didn't know was that the family that lived there before no longer lived there because they had moved out a couple months prior. But before getting into all of that, let's explain the beginnings. A small town in northwest Georgia by the name of Ackworth, which is about a half hour away from Atlanta, it was said to be one of the best suburbs in the state. There was a really good school program, so a lot of the kids there had a good education, there was a low crime rate, there was high security, and it also gave you that small town feel where everybody knew everybody, and so not only is this just a perfect place to live, this is a perfect place to also raise children, and the Hicks family actually thought this as well. The Hicks family comprised of Timothy Hicks, his wife Amber Hicks, and their two-year-old son Jacob. Timothy Justin Hicks, aka Justin, which I'm gonna be calling him Justin for the rest of this video, because a lot of people call him Justin. He was a 31-year-old firefighter and worked for the city emergency services. And as of 2021, he was actually working in this field for a total of six years. And in 2021, he actually graduated his paramedic program. So he was going to get promoted to a paramedic title. A lot of people who knew Justin would say that his passion ever since he was a kid was to help people. They always knew that he was gonna do something in the medical field field or if not the medical field just something giving back to the community and his wife Amber was the same exact way. Amber Hicks was a 31 year old audiologist assistant which basically her job was to give elderly people their hearing back so it's kind of like physical therapy but for hearing and so same thing with her a lot of people described Amber as a person who just loved helping people and just trying to ensure that everyone is living the best life that they can. And in 2019, that is when they gave birth to their two-year-old son, Jacob. But the family in the beginning of their relationship did struggle a lot financially. They didn't always have these really good jobs. They struggled a lot financially and they were given little to no help along the way. So it was literally just them trying to build themselves up in their careers to create a better future for their son. And that's exactly what they did. And in 2021, they were actually able to buy their very first home in Georgia. They bought the house on August 30th, but they didn't actually start moving in until September of 2021. And then on November 18th of 2021, at around 9.30 a.m., that is when police were called to the Hicks residence. And when the police would enter the home, they would end up finding the lifeless bodies of Amber and Justin Hicks. And Jacob was thankfully alive, but he was just wandering around around the house. And since he's only two years old, he's not able to speak or tell the officers what happened. When the police actually went to the scene, they could tell that Amber and Justin had been dead for around a couple of hours before they got there, meaning that Jacob just had to wander around the house and around his deceased parents for hours before the police got there. Police suspected that this happened in the middle of the night, and when this news came out, out that the Hicks family had been murdered. It was a big shock to the community and all of their family and friends as to why someone would want to do something like this because as I said, everyone loved the Hicks family. Everyone described Justin and Amber. They were just both passionate about giving back to the community and just helping people and so something like this was extremely shocking. And so for an entire week, the police actually had no leads on 
who this person could be until a neighbor of the Hicks family actually put in a tip to the police and told them prior to the Hicks family moving in back in September, there was another family that lived there and he remembers that that family and the family that lived across the backyard from them would get into a lot of altercations. They would always see the police at both of their houses and so the police, you know, they take note of this and they go straight to the house that this neighbor was talking about and this was actually the Lands family home. The Lands family lived across the backyard from the Hicks family and as for the Lands family, the Lands family was actually known for being a very warm and loving family, especially for the parents, but the family comprised of the mother, the father, 27-year-old Austin, and 22-year-old Matthew. And after high school, Austin actually went into the Marines, but as for Matthew, he actually went to University of Georgia, where he majored in cognitive science. But however, Austin actually wouldn't last that long in the Marines, because shortly after he enlisted himself, he was kicked off of the Marines. Now, there's not really a specific reason that I can find, so it could be anything from a personality disorder to misconduct. After he was kicked off from the Marines, he just went to go live back home with his family, and he worked in construction with his dad. And Austin never told his family the reason why he was kicked off of the Marines, so even Austin's family, like the Lands family, didn't know why. Until around 2019, the parents started to notice some odd behaviors about Austin that could relate to some sort of schizoaffective disorder. So while Matthew was away at college, Austin kind of had the house to himself when his parents were out, and so now that he had all this newfound free time, he started to become very fixated on the people who lived across the backyard from him, and at this time, living at the house was a man by the name of Philip Rent and his fiance Eliza Wells. And this couple actually moved into the home in the summer of 2019, so they had just moved in. But it wasn't until six months into them living there, December of 2019, where things started to turn very unsettling for Philip and Eliza. One day, Philip would go out and check his mailbox, and in his mailbox was this random, like, folded piece of paper, and when he opens it up, it's essentially just porn. It's a naked woman wearing a tiara, and Philip at first just kind of, like, brushed it off. He just kind of thought, you know, maybe there's some teenagers in the neighborhood that place this. Like, he doesn't really care too much, and so he ended up just throwing it away. And it wasn't until it actually happened again the following week with the same exact picture, and then the following year, in May of 2020, it had happened again with the same photo, but now there was a kid's tiara that was attached to it. And so, at this point, Philip, you know, got a really creepy feeling about this because now who's ever doing this is like harassing him. And so Philip at this point decided to call the police because he felt now that he was definitely being targeted. But unfortunately, the police said that they couldn't really do anything because they have no leads, no suspects. And the most that they can suggest is for Philip and Eliza to get security cameras. And so that's exactly what they did. That summer in July of 2020, they had put up security cameras. And at this point, they had only been living in this house for maybe like a little over a year. And then one day in July of 2020, Philip goes out to check his mailbox again, but on his way out, he notices that there's an apple juice box like leaning against his garage door and inside of the juice box is a burnt out cigarette. And so immediately Philip goes to check the cameras and what he sees is Austin in the middle of the night. He's just walking his dog and then he walks up the driveway and leans against the garage door, has a cigarette while sipping on a juice box before putting out the cigarette in the juice box and then just leaving it in front of the door. And Philip and Eliza actually had a weird feeling that it might be Austin who was sending these really perverted pictures to them because they actually said that every time they drove past the Lands family home, they always saw Austin outside just smoking a cigarette and every time they would make eye contact with him, he would give this like death stare to them and then this really creepy wave. They just kind of thought, you know, like we're new to this neighborhood. Maybe he's just like a neighborhood weirdo. Like,
like maybe he's just harmless so they had this weird feeling that it was him but they didn't know for sure and so eliza and philip immediately went to the police and so the police went to the lands family home along with philip and eliza and the lands family parents just were so apologetic they felt so so bad they were like we're sorry that he did this like we know like we need to get him help and so they were just saying you know i'm sorry for this like this won't happen again and the whole entire time while this like conversation is going on with austin his family eliza philip and the police like austin isn't really saying much but there's this one thing that he says that is extremely creepy he just looks at eliza and says that he loves to watch eliza through her bathroom window and this immediately you know creeped eliza out as it would anyone but as for pressing charges i don't think that they pressed any and so after that austin was just free to go but after this eliza and philip's relationship really started to go downhill to the point where they had broken off their engagement and eliza actually moved out of the house leaving philip to live there all by himself and although philip and eliza were separated the naked woman photo still continued in his mailbox and then one day philip went outside to go to work and he was greeted with a note on his door that said quote I'm done wondering for real. What is the point of that? And after this, that is when Philip called the police because now at this point, Austin is getting up to like the front door. And so he calls the police, tells them what's going on. And for the time being, Philip just stays with his sister. And thank God he stays with his sister because a few days after, in April of 2021, that is when Philip was sleeping. And in the middle of the night, he got a notification from his security camera app saying that someone was in his house. So he immediately goes to the app and on his security camera, he sees Austin with a crowbar in his hand, walking to every room in the house, turning on the lights, swinging the crowbar around before eventually getting upstairs and completely trashing his bedroom and throwing all his things around as if he was extremely angry that Philip wasn't home. And so while Philip is watching all of this, he tells his sister what's going on and his sister calls the police. And before the police show up, Austin actually leaves. And when the police, you know, investigated the home, they found that nothing was stolen, meaning that Austin was definitely there for Philip. After this, since Philip had the security camera footage to prove that Austin was in his home, he was later arrested for trespassing and burglary. When he was taken into the station, he didn't really you know shy away from anything that he did he owned up to all of his actions but there was a couple of things that he was saying that was really odd he was saying things such as there was airplanes in the sky that were tracking him and then his phone is being tapped and it was also said that austin was extremely violent to the officers even when he was just like going to be put into a holding center it was said that during the holding center it took took multiple officers and he actually ended up dislocating one of the officer's jaw and then the other officer he tore his ACL and chipped his knee bone and on top of that Austin also destroyed his taser which how you can destroy a taser with your bare hands I have no clue it was said that he was kicking and screaming and punching and he was yelling at the top of his lungs for like the police to hit him and that he could take on all of these police officers and he was also calling them gay which is odd and a little random now when austin was arrested this story did make really big news because it was about you know this young kid that ended up sending all these naked photos for months and months and then he's like breaking into the home trying to find the owner in order to kill him and so this story actually made big news and so when it did a a lot of people were trying to contact Eliza and trying to get her side of the story. And so Eliza actually posted to her Facebook wall her personal story with Austin Land. And she posted to Facebook saying, quote, 
sexual harassment, aggravated stalking, looking into the eyes of the person who's made you feel unsafe in your own home for the past six months, looking at the person who makes you close all of your blinds and lock all of your doors and jump at any sound you hear outside, looking at him as you hear him say he watches you through your windows, implying that by having my blinds and curtains open, I was inviting him to harass me, stalk me. This was my reality today. It's uncomfortable, it's disturbing, and it's not a thing people usually talk about. But unfortunately, just a couple weeks later, Austin was let out on bond and he was ordered to do a mental health evaluation as well as a substance abuse program, but unfortunately, neither had happened. Austin was released on July 18th of 2021 and he moved back home with his parents to work with his dad in construction, basically, you know, moving on with his life as if it never happened. Then on August 3rd of 2021, Austin ended up taking a road trip to Washington, D.C., where he got off a metro bus right in front of the Pentagon. He walked right up to the Pentagon and a security guard had stopped him, obviously because it's the Pentagon, and the officer that had stopped him was by the name of George Gonzalez. George Gonzalez was a security guard at the Pentagon, but he was also a U.S. Army veteran. He served some time in Iraq and became a part of the Pentagon Protection Agency back in 2018 and then moved his way all the way up to senior officer back in 2021. And this was the security guard that was on duty that day and when Austin stepped off the bus, he snuck up on Gonzalez from behind and started to wildly stab him with a knife. Austin ended up stabbing Gonzalez to death before before Austin took Gonzalez's gun out of his holster and shot himself in his own head. After this news came out, it was extremely devastating the death of George Gonzalez because as I said, he was loved by the community. He had a very high position, a very high title, meaning that he was very well respected and as well as Austin's family because now the Lands family has to, you know, deal with the death of their son and the parents, they did like some interviews after everything and the parents continuously say that they blame themselves. They say that they should have gotten Austin more help. They should have tried harder, but it felt like every single time they got Austin help, it ended up just getting much worse. So they just felt really lost and didn't know what to do. But although Austin is now dead, that is not the end of this story because Austin's death took a toll on everyone in the family, but the one who took it the hardest was his brother Matthew. Matthew took a huge toll on his brother's death because that was his only sibling, his only brother, and through his grieving process, he felt like he needed to blame someone, and he couldn't blame himself, and he couldn't blame Austin, and so this is when he started to become very angry at specifically Philip and Eliza that lived across the backyard from them. He became a extremely angry at Philip and Eliza and blamed the both of them for his brother's death. He says that he blames them for driving his brother insane and then that led to him killing someone and then doing the same to himself. And then two months later on November 17th of 2021, that is when he decided to seek revenge on his neighbors Eliza and Philip. But as I said earlier, Matthew doesn't live with his parents. He goes to University of Georgia, which which is about a two hour drive from where his parents live. And furthermore, he has a whole apartment that's like right down the street from his college and he very rarely like goes down to visit his parents. And so with Matthew being so far away, what he didn't know is that Philip and Eliza no longer lived there anymore. And now it was the Hicks family that lived there. Since Matthew wasn't there all the time, this was not information that he knew because he wasn't there every single day to like see the moving trucks and then see Philip moving away. So back in April of 2021, after Philip had seen Austin coming into his house with a crowbar to obviously murder Philip, he rightfully so did not want to spend another night alone in that house and so he moved immediately. In August of 2021, the Hicks family had bought the house and then in September of 2021, they had moved in. Matthew lived two 
two hours away from his family. And so although the house was on the market for most of the summer, I'm assuming he didn't go to his house over the summer. So that would make sense why he didn't know that Philip and Eliza had already moved out. But on the night of November 19th, 2021 is when Matthew decided to seek his revenge on Philip and Eliza, but he was unaware that Philip and Eliza had moved out. It was suspected that he broke into the home between the hours of 8 p.m. and 12 a.m. He broke into the house through a window using a window smasher and then he came in with a pistol and it's suspected that when he first walked in he shot Amber first from the back of the head and this shot instantly killed her and then after this Justin got up to run away but Austin had shot him in the back of the head as well because when the police had showed up they found Amber's body on the couch but they found Justin's body laying down on the floor next to the couch. Even to this day we don't know why Matthew decided to let Jacob live or even if he saw Jacob at all. I'm assuming the gunshots were loud so it would have startled Jacob and led him to come downstairs but we don't know if Matthew saw Jacob or if he decided to let him live but Jacob was found by the police a couple hours later and he was found unharmed. But what was really odd about all of this is that Matthew, unlike his brother Austin, had no history of mental illnesses. Austin showed a lot of signs of mental illness. He needed a lot of help. He was discharged from the Marine. But as for Matthew, he was smart. He went to college. He was educated. He had plans for himself. But for some reason, the death of his brother Austin had just triggered something in him to go on this murderous revenge. And it was said that this crime was very heavily premeditated because Matthew even tried to collect all of the shell casings that he fired. So the police couldn't try to figure out what gun he was using. And then on November 19th of 2021, two days later, that is when the police got a call about a home invasion in Fulton, Georgia. So basically what happened was that this family had called the police because they said that a young kid had broken into their house and ran upstairs and he had basically just locked himself upstairs and the family was scared to go upstairs because this is just some random teenager and they don't know if he's armed and so the police show up. I will leave all of the body cam footage linked down below if you want to watch it in its full but basically most of the body cam footage is just the police at the bottom of the stairs trying to negotiate with Matthew who was at the top of the stairs just trying to get Matthew to come down and Matthew continuously says that house that he's in is actually his house and then he goes on and tries to lure the officer upstairs by saying things like oh are you scared to come up here why don't you just come up here and so after a lot of convincing Matthew eventually does come downstairs but when he does he immediately lunges at the officer with a knife and the officer suffered a lot of pretty bad stab wounds but the officer had actually pulled out his gun and shot Matthew twice but both were taken to the hospital and both survived. When Matthew was taken into custody that is when they linked Matthew to the uh, double homicide home invasion and the reason why they were able to link Matthew to the crime like the murder of Justin and Amber Hicks is through cell phone towers because they found that Matthew's phone had actually left his apartment at 8 p.m. the night of the murders and then ended up at the Hicks family home at around 9 p.m. where it stayed there for a while before he eventually just drove back to his apartment. There was also ring doorbell footage provided by a neighbor that showed Matthew walking along the streets and the clothes that he was wearing would actually be later found in his apartment in the washing machine. And when police had told the Lands family parents about all of this, the Lands parents said that they had a really deep feeling that Matthew had something to do with this because they even drove out two hours to visit Matthew and ask him in person, did you have anything to do with Justin and Amber's murder? But of course, Matthew denied it. He said that he has no idea what they're talking about. He would never do anything like that. But as the parents were going around his apartment, they actually ended up finding a pistol that was just like the same pistol that was used on the crime scene at the Hicks family home. 
When searching Matthew's car, police would find binoculars, a large metal flashlight with a pointed head cap uh, designed to break a window, which makes sense because when they were investigating the crime scene, it was a uh, break-in through the window. Also found a lot of ammo in his car as well. After all of this was found, that is when Matthew was arrested and charged with probably the most amount of charges I've ever like seen anyone with. He was charged charged with two counts of malice murder, four counts of felony murder, one count of home invasion, two counts of aggravated assault, two counts of possession of a firearm during commission of a felony, one count of cruelty to children in the second degree, and one count of tampering with evidence. Now, as for Matthew today, his trial was supposed to be in January of 2023, but that trial date has been postponed to August of 2023. As of today, Matthew is still living out his sentence awaiting trial. I don't think Matthew was given a bail or a bond, so most likely he will be sitting in jail until his trial date is here. But yeah, that is the end of today's story. If you guys found this video interesting, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to follow me on any of my socials, like my Instagram, that will be linked down below, as well as my PO box if you want to send me anything. And I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. Do you think that Matthew deserves a life sentence or do you think that he deserves rehabilitation? Do you think that if Austin would have went through a substance abuse program and a mental health evaluation, if that would have changed anything or no matter how much help he would have got, he would have always had this deep murderous tendency? And do you think it was the death of Austin that triggered Matthew to do what he did or do you think Matthew had always had this deep murderous rage inside of him, but it just kind of came out when his brother had passed away. I would love to hear all of your guys' thoughts and opinions in the comments below, so please let me know, and if you go ahead and do your own research about the case and you find something that I did not find in my research or that I simply did not say, make sure to leave that in the comments below because I'm pretty sure everyone here would be very interested to hear what you have to say. And yeah, that is all from me. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure to be safe out there. Go outside today, breathe in some fresh air, listen to a couple birds, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.